what now? Subtract. To find the mass defect, right. And obviously you want it to come out positive, so you want to subtract the bigger minus the smaller, but we knew that there's going to be more mass on the left. because we've been working in AMUs all along. Okay, good. Now what? So what will be a good next logical step if we wanted to find the binding energy? Oh, the equation. equation. Okay. But remember we said that we have to use SI units when we're using this equation. So the next step is to translate this into SI units. Oh, okay. So let's work that out on paper. How would we do that? So we have to convert that back to kilograms. Right. Okay. Let's work out on paper how to do that. So it's like 1 AMU is, oh, I don't know. Oh, the Well, this is just a unit conversion, so I guess we're going to use our standard techniques for unit conversions. Okay, and then I guess I'm not sure if we have both protons and neutrons. Right, but actually this has nothing to do with the particular protons and neutrons we're working with. For example, how would you change, um, suppose that you have a time of um, one week, how would you change that into days? We just multiply by seven, right? So it's just a standard unit conversion. Right. So we have to look at what the conversion ratio is between atomic mass units and kilograms. So what units do we need to put down here? AMU. Good. And what units on the top? Kilograms. And now we just need to know what numbers to put in these two places. Well, let's look in your back cover. What do they say is the relationship between kilograms and AMUs? Oh. Yeah, I think we already talked about that a little bit right. earlier. Right. That has nothing to do with the particular numbers in this problem. Right. Just like there's 12 inches in a foot. Right, to put, regardless of how, how long the length is that you're looking at. So this is just a standard unit conversion. So here's the unit conversion that we're going to use. 1.66. At this point, you could probably round off more, but I'm not going to. 1.6605. 4 times 10 to the negative 2 kilograms. You can look that, oh, you don't have your book with you. Yeah, so we'll put that in in a second. Even if you clear, you can still hit second entry. Oh, too late now. <laughs> 5.03 times, whoa, one of us made a mistake. Oh, me, this would be 10 to the negative 27. I actually did that first, too. <laughs> Last four, I get 5.018 times 10 to the negative 29. How about what you got? I got 5.0347 times 10 to the negative 29. Wait, why is it 0.30222? Is it supposed to be 3 2? I think so. And I made a mistake. Okay, that was my mistake. Three, four, 
eight, if you round off. Okay, good. And that's in joules. So now we can plug in to e equals mc squared. That's times 10 to the negative 29. So now we have to look up C. What is that going to be? 3.0, or 2.980, I mean, whatever. But 3.0 times 10 to the 8. Yeah, we can call that 3 times 10 to 8. And we have to remember to square that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do we get for that? would that be in? Because Joule. joules is the SI unit for energy. Is that what you got? Yeah, I, oh. I actually put that in the negative there Oh, yeah, good point. All right, now, usually what we don't want the total energy, we want the energy per nucleon. So um, how do we do this? Well, first of all, we should always express our energy per something. So what is this per? Well, this was the energy that we get per every helium that we make. So we should have said that this was... per helium nucleus. I don't need to put per here because I'm putting it on the bottom. So this is per helium nucleus. This is an important step when you're dealing with binding energy. Always express it as a ratio so that you know what it's referring to. You could also say this is per every two protons or per every two neutrons, but we're more likely to be uh, focusing on how it's per one helium. So how much would this be per nucleon? How could we figure that out? Cheated. I looked at the book, but it, is that because it's per, the proton, like four? Protons and neutrons. Yeah. Right. Okay. So how many nucleons are there in helium? Four. Right. How could we do that as a conversion ratio? Well, um, what units should I put up here if I want to do this conversion? Four. Well, I want to get rid of this, right? So I should put this unit up here. And what unit should I put down here? Nucleons. That's how we do unit conversions. We put in one unit that we want to cancel out, and we put in another unit that we want to insert. And now we have to put in numbers that give us the conversion ratio. Well, what is the um, conversion ratio between helium nucleuses and nucleons? What number can I put on the top and the bottom? For example, if you had one helium nucleus, how many nucleons would that represent? Yeah, that's right. So this is kind of the formal way to see how to do what you were kind of doing intuitively before. The reason you were dividing by four is because there's four nucleons per helium. This is, again, just a very standard unit conversion, um, like we have to do a lot of the times in the chemistry class. Uh, if you want to get rid of a unit, you put in a conversion ratio that has that same unit so that they will cancel. Here we want to cancel the heliums. And in the other part of that conversion ratio, you put the unit that you want to insert. And then you have to find the right numbers for the conversion ratio. Well, you want to have numbers so that the top is equivalent to the bottom. Conversion ratios are supposed to have equivalent tops and bottoms. That way, we're just really multiplying by one. Since one helium is the same as four nucleons, we're really multiplying by one, and that doesn't change anything. That's the theory behind unit conversion. OK, so then we could divide this by four to find um, 1.13 times 10 to the negative 12. And what would be the units on that now? So joules per nucleon. Joules per nucleon. Good. 